Hello, and welcome to Intuitive. What I'm going to be showing you today is how a pathologist will use Copath and the Intuitive Expert system to complete a synoptic report. Let's begin by searching for a patient by name. Here's the patient we're looking for. And as you can see, these are the different specimens we can choose from. There are three specimens assigned to this case. The appropriate specimen is selected, so I'll click OK, and we'll select Final Diagnosis Entry slash Edit and click OK. So, as I'm sure many of you are aware, we're at the Final Entry Diagnosis screen, where the transcriptionist or pathologist typically launches Microsoft Word to enter report findings. We're in a spot in the case where we know there's cancer, and we want to complete a synoptic report. So we click on the Synoptic Reporting button. We have launched the Synoptic Work List. At the right side on the bottom, we can see all the part types that do not have Synoptic Reports completed for them. Here, we can choose to work on an existing report, or open a new report. Default Synoptic Templates can be assigned in the Copath Library for each of the Synoptic Reports. As you can see in the list of part types for this case, the system has not assigned default checklists for the majority of our part types. If you click on the Show All box, you will see a list of all the templates that are available. There's a synoptic report template available for each checklist produced by the CAP. Now, we'll type breast into the search box and select it. Click Open Expert. We'll select the default part type by clicking OK. Before we get started, let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the intuitive user interface. In the upper left-hand corner of the screen, we have a navigation tree. Now, this is a visual representation of the CAP checklist. Required fields are designated with a red circle, while fields that are not required are designated with a black diamond. The upper right-hand pane is used for data entry. This is where the end user will be answering questions and making inputs. The buttons here are also used for navigation. At the bottom of the screen, a report actually builds as you enter information into the system. This is where the information you enter is displayed. We'll discuss the functionality of these tabs as the presentation progresses. We'll begin by selecting the specimen type, mastectomy, lymph node sampling. We'll select sentinel lymph nodes with axillary dissection. Specimen size, greatest dimension, 5. Let's use the number pad to enter the additional dimension, 4. And the final additional dimension, 3. It's important to note that you can enter data using a keyboard and mouse, touchscreen, or a stylus if you're using a tablet PC. Laterality, left. The Intuitive Expert system is running in the background, and it's smart enough to know that in regards to this specific field, multiple pieces of data can be accepted. The Expert system also prevents the end user from selecting multiple pieces of data that do not make sense, such as, we'll select not specified, and we'll also try to select lower inner quadrant. As you can see, the system will not allow this. We must deselect not specified before making another selection. We'll pick upper outer quadrant. Greatest dimension, 4.5. Additional dimension, 3.5. Final additional dimension, 3.5. Histologic type. In a moment, we're going to select invasive carcinoma. But as you can see right now, non-invasive carcinoma and invasive carcinoma are both turned off. Let's click Enter to select Invasive Carcinoma. Now that I've made my selection, you can see that Non-Invasive is turned off. The system will never ask you questions that are not applicable. It will also not include these questions in the final report, which is important for clinicians reading the report. Obviously, this is not possible with paper forms, and it's another advantage of using an expert system. Let's take a moment to learn how the Info tab works. We'll begin by highlighting an invasive lobular. We'll click on Info. You can see that the system only provides you with context-sensitive info that's applicable based on where you are in the report. 
As you can see, CapNote C1 is available. CapNote C1 pertains to invasive lobular carcinoma. Now if we highlight invasive mucinous carcinoma, you can see that CapNote C2 becomes available. And that note pertains to invasive mucinous carcinoma. The system can also perform a contextual search based on the data we've input thus far. We'll click on Info and we'll click on Search PubMed. What the system has done is it's gone out to the PubMed website and performed a contextual search. In other words, it has just retrieved information that is applicable to the case you're working on. There are only 38 cases out of all the available cases on PubMed that apply. Next, let's take a look at the Properties tab. We can capture and assign alternative representations to the structured data. As you can see here, we have SNOMED codes. The SNOMED codes are specific to the piece of data we are working with. You can add additional codes here that are applicable to your specific institution. You can do this using the Agile Author. That's Intuitive's development platform. The Agile Author allows for the creation of custom software applications quickly and easily without requiring the utilization of software programmers. Let's move on to the size of invasive component. Greatest dimension, 4. Second dimension, 2. Third dimension, 0.5. The Nottingham system, tubule formation, we'll select moderate, Nuclear pleomorphism, small, mitotic count, 10 to 20. Now we'll click Next Unanswered, and as you can see, the total Nottingham score has been calculated for the end user. As you can see, the report includes hypertext fields, in case you need to navigate quickly back to a certain field. Let's click on Nuclear pleomorphism. I'm going to change the value here to moderate. We'll click Enter. And you can see when I did that, the total Nottingham score was recalculated. Let's move on to the LIP node summary. Number examined, 5. Number involved. If I accidentally type 33 here instead of 3 and click Enter, we get an alert message advising us that the number involved must be lower or equal to the number examined. We'll click OK to acknowledge that message. This is another example of how expert prevents unintended errors. We'll enter 3 and click enter. Next I'm going to skip over some of this non-required material. We're going to go to tumor markers. We aren't actually going to fill this section out. I just wanted to mention it as an example of where we have added additional data elements to the standard CAP reports because all of our clients have asked us to. Using the Agile Author, you can customize templates and reports quickly and easily. Let's navigate down to Margins. We'll select Invasive Tumor Extends to Margins. Here we'll enter Distal. And we'll indicate the extent of involvement is unifocal. We've arrived at the AJCC staging area where we can stage the tumor primary tumor. We'll select PT2, click Next, Regional Lip Nodes, PN1, Distant Metastasis. We'll say that metastasis cannot be assessed. We'll click Enter, and as you can see, the AJCC pathologic stage has been derived for us. The pathologist can enter additional findings and comments. When you're done and ready to submit your report to COPATH, simply hit the Submit button. To view your report in paper form, simply click on this button. This will launch Microsoft Word, and you can show the Synoptic report in the final report. Finally, we'll go back into the Synoptic work list. There's the report we just submitted. We could make changes to it if we wanted to. Thank you for viewing this demonstration of Expert for Pathology.